Today we'll demo the S7-1200 uh, servers, the web server and the OPC server. We'll be using this just 12.14. First we'll open up the um, portal and I have a demo project that's already set up and we'll go through that. The settings are already made in this project. Uh, this is really the review um, the technology, not a step-by-step uh, -step tutorial. Although uh, you should be able to uh, replicate this by uh, following along, but all of this is uh, open in uh, various YouTube uh, and other documentation is available for uh, each uh, element in these uh, videos. Most of the configuration will be done here in the hardware uh, config. So drill down into the processor. Um, of course, you'll you know you, you want to make sure that normal uh, Ethernet is set up. Um, let's see, get in here. Now the first thing is want to make sure that the web page is turned on, and I did. Uh, I did not turn on the HTTPS. In these examples, I'm just trying to show the connectivity, not setting up all the passwords, security levels. Um, now on the custom uh, web page, I want to uh, also have the ability to look at a watch table. So you can just make as many watch tables as you want. They'll actually show up in the uh, one of the pre-configured uh, choices in the web page. Uh, because we're going to use as the uh, root of our web pages the default generated pages that come with the PLC when you check off web page enabled. Now I'm putting in the um, the web page uh, that we want to have as the custom add-on. It's actually just an example you can download from Siemens. Uh, they have lots of examples. It's a very basic table type. Uh, I'm not a web page uh, designer, so anything you can do in uh, HTML, uh, you can code uh, in these web pages. So all the graphics you would like, um, any of those elements are uh, valid, and it will run in here. Um, and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and start with the default web pages uh, as the base. Now, a lot of these uh, elements will be displayed in a Raspberry Pi to show the openness of everything we're doing. Windows, Linux, doesn't matter. Uh, there is a little purple tint to the free uh, capture program uh, that I use for the Raspberry Pi. Yes, you get what you pay for. Uh, so all you got to do now is type in the uh, IP address of the PLC, which is, you know, the Profinet IP address. Uh, I don't have a login because I, I just have it all open, but normally you'd have to log in. Um, I don't know why uh, Chrome wants to translate, but... <laughs> so this is the standard pages that come with it. None of this I actually had to program. Then we did add a page which is just really a table of some variables that were in the PLC. Um, and you know, I'm hitting you know, F5 to update, and you can see that there's a little uh, variable counter in there, and it's changing. Uh, and you can write it, you know, your variables and read them. So nothing simpler than that. Now the OPC server is a little bit longer set up in the PLC, but it's... Uh, Basically, like everything you do, we want to go to the hardware and set it up. Once again, uh, we're going to demo this uh, with the uh, Raspberry Pi to show that any open system, servers, whatever you want, uh, can speak, uh, speak to the OPC UA server in the PLC. The device speaking to it will, of course, be the client. And that will be running on your PC or another uh, Siemens uh, 
a seven fifteen hundred can be a client. I'm just stepping through, making sure that everything was set up. Got a name in there. Um, Once again, we're just showing that the web pages are enabled still. So we're running both web pages and we're going to run OPC UA on the same uh, PLC at the same time. Uh, of course, I always check these memory bits. They come default off for some reason. <laughs> um, and web page. Uh, under security, when you deploy this for real, you're going to want to have security on passwords and user rights for demo I'm just turning on the uh, OPC UA by the checkbox there uh, there's the server's address which is in the standard format of OPC UA I'm leaving all the timeout defaults the same uh, leaving it with the all the default settings with uh, all the user management uh, security just set to default, which is off. Again, you never deploy this as the final working system without passwords. Now you're going to need a runtime license. Uh, you click that you have a runtime license. The 1200 only has the one small. Uh, there are large ones available if you're doing this in the 1500 and you set it up exactly the same way in the same software. So there's nothing uh, special there. Now, the, now that I've enabled the OPC UA server, I have to uh, go and uh, select what's actually going to be uh, visible to the OPC client. Uh, so. I've got the server, then I've inserted uh, just two uh, variables, and those two variables will now be visible from uh, OPC clients and browsers. If it's not in here, it's not visible, and they cannot be read. Uh, and variables can be uh, granularly set down to read only, write only, um, you know, uh, read write. These are set for read write. Now, this is just a free downloadable uh, OPC UA browser. There's lots of them out there on the web. So I'm just checking uh, in my Windows machine that uh, I can see it. So I'm just going in anonymous without any user or password because that's the way I got the OPC server set up for demo only. Um, then I can see that I'm connected to the server. I can go in and see what tags are available. Of course, only two tags that I said could be uh, available. Then I can get the properties. Now that's an important number. It's going to pop up when we try to read that tag uh, via programs. Uh, so that's why the browser is something that you will want uh, again, there's a bunch of them free on the internet, and Siemens has some free ones uh, as well that run in like a spreadsheet. Um, so now I'm just telling it to uh, go ahead and subscribe, and you can see the value will be changing because it's reading it, and I told it to read it once a second. Um, the faster you read it, the more communication load you put on. So. Pick your uh, update times uh, according to what you really need for uh, historians or control. Um, but it, it does put more com load and processor load. Now we're going to do the same thing in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, again with a, another free uh, browser. Uh, and then we'll actually read the tags. Uh, directly with uh, free Python code that anyone can use. 
Again, this isn't a tutorial on how to do it uh, for your final application. It's really just to show you the overview and then uh, show you how open everything is. OPC UA is an open protocol. It's free. All the information is uh, readily available. Uh, if you write in your own programs, they're available in libraries to write your programs, which we'll see. Uh, in addition, uh, there's no brand uh, specific uh, that you have to be with. Siemens, of course, has all kinds of historian tools, data logging uh, programs available. Uh, but this will work with Siemens, Wonderware, uh, you know, uh, Ignition, whatever you have out there. If it speaks OPCUA, uh, you can directly connect to this processor and get the variables. So again, the show with openness, I just said, hey, I'll write with just some free open protocols, a Python uh, script that'll read a couple variables. So I went ahead and wrote it. Now I'm just going to run it and see it sitting there just uh, pulling up variables. This is not a fancy program. We'll look at it uh, later a little bit, but just really simple. I'm just going to read 20 variables, um, store them in a, an open database uh, to show that, again, bam. And it makes a little graph. Uh, of data but it's not supposed to be showing off uh, a great program or program skills what it's showing is whatever brand you have you can connect right with the Siemens processors uh, no special servers required uh, like it used to be uh, with the other types of OPCs all right so the code is pretty simple it's Python code Python script uh, the OPC library, uh, there's a little SQL uh, uh, library there. You just install the uh, libraries. They come down from the internet. They're free. Uh, I just make a couple arrays that I'm going to stick the data in uh, and populate the X uh, value in the array. Uh, I also ask for a, a start key number for my database. Uh, normally, that you code that to be automatic, uh, but then I connect to the my database, so I can just store this information in the Pi. Um, then I set up to actually talk to the uh, OPC client. Then I just read and print out the information, and as you notice, there's that. Uh, NS4I3 there. That was from the browser. Remember I said those the browser tag information? That's where I got that from. Uh, and this is where the two tags showed up. Uh, I stands for integer. Uh, S would be for a string. Those are integers, so they're I's. Um, so then uh, I simply just sit here and push data as I read it into the database. I uh, do that just to show that, you know, you don't have to be fancy to actually store data. Uh, then I make a little graph of the data, just to, like a historian uh, graph, just to show it. Uh, and then I allow myself to end the program. Uh, so the deal is it's open and anyone can can do it with whatever products that they're used to dealing with.